yet another week, yet another video format, and another One Piece chapter. Um, I, before I even get into the chapter review itself, I did switch up how I am doing chapter reviews, so now it's not going to be me just scrolling through the chapter talking about it, because I felt like that was really lazy, and that was really, really copyright strikeable, which I don't really want. So I'm going to do this, so you might be seeing it now. Um, I'm going to do One Piece related stuff, kind of like I did with the um, Burning Blood videos way back. But this is going to be more like creative. So this week I'm coloring a panel from the chapter. Um, and depending on the week I might do different stuff. So this week is just a manga coloring. Next week might be me doing a crop of something, like masking stuff out. It might be doing a collage, making a background, whatever I'm feeling to do that week. But that's besides the point. Now we have a chapter to talk about, don't we? Um, it's chapter 1037, and it's named Sherman Hake, I believe is how you pronounce it. Uh, it translates to Drunk Dragon Baguya. So if that's saying what this chapter is going to be about, I think it is. And we have the cover story, again, with the Jerma 66. And we get to see, I believe, Judge is injured. It looks like he is, at least. He looks like he has something covering his eye. Um, and it looks like they're just kind of resting on one of the buildings in the Jerma Island. Just kind of, like the thing says, just letting out a sigh. So, I this is one that I'm really excited to see how it unravels. Because this could actually be a very big lore thing like this couldn't drop a lot mo how most cover stories do um and in the we start off the chapter with seeing the um flower capital and the fire festival and we get to see how the people are reacting and it's really cool because this is i believe one of the more in-depth times we've seen what's happening in the fire festival um this is the only day of the year where i can drink so it's just kind of hammering home that Wano, this is a Wano highlight day, basically. And we get to see that they write messages on lanterns to send up to their ancestors. And the two that we see is, I want to see my mom again, and food for the kids. Which, I don't think it's very um, hidden on the fact of what's going to happen here. These are all going to float upwards to where Onigashima is when Onigashima inevitably starts falling because it's gonna happen maybe not destroy the flyer capital but it is going to eventually lose altitude and become visible and all these lanterns might be up in the sky with Luffy and Kaido as they do the end of their fight probably with Luffy's KO hit you ha see all the lanterns up I think that'd be really cool and it just kind of feels obvious to do but in the actual Luffy versus Kaido fight, which I believe is the rest of the chapter, um, Kaido was drinking in his human form, not even hybrid anymore. He's drinking a big barrel of sake, and Luffy asks, why are you drinking? And Kaido responds, because I'm having fun, the capital is celebrating the Fire Festival today, but you ruined it, because we're supposed to have this grand banquet on Onigashima. So, yeah, we knew Kaido was a drunk, we've known that for a while. Uh, Luffy yells at him saying, you're totally wasted. You better not use this as an excuse when you lose. So this is very clearly showing that Luffy still has that honor when he fights, kind of. It's it's a Luffy thing. Like He doesn't want his opponent to have an excuse why they lost. They need to own their loss themselves. Um, but we see that Kaido doesn't get weak when he drunks. He gets stronger. And he says this very curious thing, but I'll explain why it's curious. I I can't remember the last time I was challenged to a serious one-on-one -on -one fight. Meaning that two years ago, when him and Shanks fought, when Kaido went to Marine Ford, they either did not have a one-on-one -on -one fight, or Shanks was just not that powerful for Kaido to recognize this strong. Meaning that if Shanks and him did have the one-on-one -on -one fight, Luffy is at this point stronger than Shanks was two years ago. Which, I'm gonna guess with an Emperor of the Sea, he's kind of plateaued with his strength. With probably no more big growth in sight. So I'm gonna say it here. 
if Kaido and Shanks did have a one-on-one -on -one fight two years ago before Marine Ford, Luffy at this point is stronger than Shanks. So I'm going to comfortably say that at this point, if Luffy can take down Kaido, Luffy can take out any of the Emperors with practically no exceptions. Because Blackbeard is the only one I can think of a possibility that he wouldn't win, and that would be a complete story-based thing. Like, maybe Blackbeard's Devil Fruit gets in the way or something, because we know that it's effective against Logia types, but we don't know how that's going to go with Luffy's Paramecia. We don't know if Luffy's going to awaken his Devil Fruit. We don't know how that's going to roll. So I'm going to make it the statement now. I think Luffy, at this point, can take out any Emperor, and that's really hearkened by the fact that if it's one-on-one, -on -one, always bet on Kaido might be broken with this fight, with Kaido actually losing. And also, I think that this is a very natural time to bring up Gear 5th. If Luffy is going to get a Gear 5th, it has to be in this fight. He cannot get that with his final fight in Blackbeard, because then it will feel really sudden. And since this is a one-on-one -on -one fight, it would just make sense for him to bring out his newest card in a serious one-on-one -on -one fight. My personal opinion is... Take that as you will. Um, and we see Luffy goes for some sort of rock attack. And Kaido ducks it and uses Laughing Drunk. Rog he uses Laughing Drunk Ragnarok, which is a move where he spikes the person into the floor. We've seen it. It's a normal Baguya attack, whatever. And we get to see that the... In the interior, the live floor, the roof is cracking, and the dome isn't stable, and the castle is on fire. This entire building is going downhill very quickly. Um, and we see that Kaido's attack actually did hurt Luffy. He, he expresses pain. Um, but Kaido was in dragon form. For some reason, he changes to dragon form. And he is in his sad drunk phase where he says that it'll take about five years to rebuild Onigashima. And then we get to see Kaido use Dragon Demolition Twister, which is where he spins his dragon body real fast, and Luffy's able to block it without any major repercussions, it looks like. And then Kaido transitions into Crying Drunk Phase, where he uses Thunder Baguya, his normal basic attack, in my opinion. Um, and Luffy's able to seemingly dodge it, use the Baguia as a jumping, like a platform, and then kick Kaido in the face. Very easily. Um, this is really selling the point where they're, they are on equal footing. They are trading blows back and forth. Very, very obvious with the panel, um, the final panel on the page after the big boy attack the um the panel where they are headbutting each other with conquerors hockey that that's just if there's one panel of one piece that really sells how strong luffy is it's that one and probably the sky split um but we see they use the conquerors hockey blasty blast and luffy makes the remark that kaido's hockey is getting stronger meaning that kaido not only seemingly gets stronger and releases his limits when he's drunk, he might actually act, he might, his hockey might actually get stronger when he's drunk. Um, and then Luffy's attack seemingly sobered him up, so now he's in the angry drunk phase. And to finish the chapter, right? Yeah, this is, no, we're not at the end of the chapter. Hold up, hold up. I, I was wrong. Sorry, I misremembered the chapter. We see that Luffy uses Gumu Gumu no Rock Gatling, which Makes me think that Rock is going to be the new um, Red Hawk because he's using it for different attacks that he would have used Red Hawk for usually. And Kaido counters with a uh, Gundare Meteor Shower, meaning Prime Dragon Army and the Kanji. Uh, each of the attacks land, they again trade blows. Each one is feeling the might of the other one. And um, Kaido goes first one with the Bagia. Luffy's able to block it. And Luffy goes for I, he goes for a kick, infused with Conqueror's hockey, and then he seemingly just smashes Kaido with it right in the gut, and Kaido coughs up blood. Luffy is 
seemingly pissed the fuck off as we cut away from that, I was wrong at the beginning, to the holy land of Marriage Roi, um, where we get to see how we get, for the first time in a while, we get a little uh, pickup on the reverie. And one of the ghetto say say it's as year it's as it's as if this year's reverie was cursed. We should put what aside what happened aside for now. Wano is the more pressing issue. There was no way of knowing that this battle would go this far. Nico Robin must have been apprehended by now. It's time to act. It wouldn't be out of place for someone to die unexpectedly during a war that involves Kaido and Big Mom. This is our chance to erase that nuisance. And with that nuisance, I'm going to guess they mean Luffy and if they don't I'm gonna guess they mean the entire emperor system if one of the emperors die we are then at a point where we've lost about half of the original emperors so we're not really that the emperor's system is falling apart very quickly at the hands of Luffy so that might be the nuisance that they're talking about or it could just be Luffy himself and then we get to see the seas around Wano and I'm going to guess that we're getting this as a very major thing that's going to play in later. Uh, the Garosei are in direct contact with the Marines. Um, all units standing by, what's the matter? There's a giant shadow. What is it? No idea. An island? That's impossible. That fruit is nothing but a legend now, even for us. It hasn't awakened for centuries. How else do you explain the world government giving a specific devil fruit a unique name? They were hiding the fruit's name from the annals of history. And then the final panel, we see Zunessa and all of the fucking marine warships just having a standoff. And this is a very interesting thing because I'm going to put my own theory into the ring. I've combined ideas at this point. Zunesha, we know, was cursed to walk forever until they died, but we don't think that Zunesha will die. If they do, oof, that's going to be rough for Zoe whenever that happens. But again, this means that Zunesha is bringing Zoe to Wano. And that means this entire time that Zunesha has been walking, he has been walking with the purpose of getting to Wano. And it just so happens to line up with Luffy versus Kaido, the uh, the uh, Alliance versus the Beast Pirates, everything is culminating on this one specific day, seemingly faded from 20 years ago with Odin saying what he said and how Lady Toki died with the 20-year prophecy. This is a very special day in One Piece history, and I cannot wait to see how this actual day ends. Because like I said, we have the lanterns that I'm going to guess are a Chekhov's gun. They have to come back later. If not, why bring them up? And I this chapter is just amazing in my opinion. Maybe not perfect. There's no such thing as a perfect One Piece chapter since Marine Ford happened. That was a joke. But I'm just really interested to see what happens. Um... I also might start finally releasing content more regularly. I want to do a video going over my thoughts on every One Piece arc. I might stream it live on Twitch and then edit it down myself and upload it to YouTube and get the compressed idea. I might write a script for everyone. I don't know what I'll do, but we'll see. Um, but until... Oh, there's also a break next week, so no chapter next week. Um, but until next time... Stay safe, have fun, and read more manga. Okay, guys. Bye.